I think that certainly the highs were the, with the Heineken Cup semi-final, you know, making history with Edinburgh, and also the consistency that, that Glasgow brought to bear from a from a club perspective, and, and just seeing how that team developed over the season, and how difficult they were to beat, and the team spirit that was that was generated uh, over at Fir Hill. Um, and off the field, I think the move to Scotstoun is massively exciting. And I think that some of the developments we've done here at the stadium in, in, in Murrayfield, in terms of trackside, opening up the, the facility again to the supporters, becoming focused and supporter uh, friendly in terms of the back car park for internationals, those kind of things, have really showed that, that I think we're up for business and that we're tuned into the improving the customer experience here. I joined and went straight out to the World Cup and from, from my personal point of view it was a fantastic learning experience to, to go out there to see the World Cup uh, close at hand but also to meet all the people that you need to meet in international rugby uh, in one go because they only congregate in one place every four years. That was tremendously useful for me. What was disappointing was that we went to the Southern Hemisphere with, with such high hopes and, 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 and well, our hopes were dashed in in not reaching the, the, the last date for the first time in, in history. And that, that, that hurt, that really did hurt. And I think we hoped that we would uh, improve matters during the Six Nations, and in many ways we did. We, we, we played a great brand of rugby, open running, attacking rugby. But when you look at the scoreboard, it records a 5-0 whitewash, and, and that was also hard to take. And I think we've learned a lot from that experience. We regrouped and regathered and then improved matters tremendously by going down to Australia and winning down in Newcastle. Uh, uh, in a thrilling match in awful conditions and then going to the islands and, and beating uh, Fiji and Samoa. So we pretty, the, the, the season ended on a high spot. And I think we've, we learned a lot of lessons from the first two campaigns uh, when we executed them properly in the third. Well, the roadshow has been massively important as a, as a learning experience for us as a, as a union, but for me personally, hearing people's views about what matters to them. I think we do a great deal of work through our community development officers uh, out there in, in Clubland. But more importantly, you know, learning from our sponsors, RBS have done a great job out there working with, with, with our grassroots uh, communities. But I think we've still got lots to do. We're a small nation with low playing numbers and we have to do everything in our power to make sure that rugby is a game that people want to play and schools adopt and that we can get out there and promote. And so there's tons and tons of work for us to do out there, but I think we're on the right path and we're growing the sport uh, as we speak and we continue to grow the sport through our strategic plan, which will take us through to 2016. I think you, you, have a, you have a core idea of, of where you want to take the business or where you want to take the organisation yourself. But it's informed by what happens out there in the rest of the nation and, and, and just understanding what we can do and, and, and exactly what we have to do to try and make us successful at all levels. And I mean that from grassroots level right way through to international level. So the road shows perform a, a, a real function there. We also have uh, consultation groups with every one of our publics, whether it's refereeing community, the women's game, whether it's uh, uh, P1, P2 forums. We, we talk to the people constantly about what they want and then we try to deliver our strategic plan in, in, in light of their needs. So what I'm, what, what I, what I'm impressed with the strategic plan is it's, it's scale and it's ambition and it's scope. We, this, is not, this is not something that's a, a document that can be gathering dust on a shelf. This is a live document which has um, us really achieving uh, something meaningful in, in, in world sport in the next four years. What I'm trying to develop here, or what we're trying to develop here, is the idea of Team Scotland, where everybody gets involved behind us, from government to our stakeholders to our supporters, for the players to community clubs, and we all get behind uh, the nation's team, and we actually deliver um, uh, a fantastic result at the end of this four years, which will see us doing extremely well in the next World Cup. But I think the, the most important thing is we've got to inspire Scotland through rugby, and that's the, that's the key phrase in the strategic plan, and that's what we want to engender. I think what comes with investment is ambition and uh, certain obligations to perform. We now have uh, uh, playing budgets of £4.2 million, pounds, which are very close to the English Premiership. We really expect now to, to deliver on that performance. And if you look at what we did last year uh, in, in terms of getting through to the semi-final of the um, Heineken Cup and also the latter stages of, of Rabo, as well as Glasgow doing really well in Heineken. And it shows that we can do this, we can compete. And what I want both coaching teams now is to kick on and prove that. And that's going to be their benchmark, is to get through to the second phase of European competition, but also be at the business end of, of the Rabo Direct uh, Pro 12. 
Well, I think the thing is we've got to test ourselves against the best. I mean, there's no point in trying to say to ourselves, well, you know, we'll, we'll take developmental steps. We have to develop, develop and win. This is, this, is, this is the reality of, of international sport. And I think what we're doing at club level, uh, at pro team level, is trying to be the best we can in European, in European uh, competitions, both at Heineken level and also Rabo. In terms of uh, the international, we've got a hell of a schedule. If you look at it, you know, first up the world champions, followed by South Africa, followed by Tonga, and then we only got a small matter of the Six Nations straight after that. So no pressure there then. But you know, you have to look and say, I want to be tested at that level. This is, this is where we want to be tested. And when you talk to the players and the coaching group, you sit there and you ask them the question, they want to play at that level. They want to be testing themselves at that level. And what you'll find are some, uh, some ups and downs when you, when, when you challenge the best in the world. But you're learning all the time, you're developing all the time, and I think that's how you get continual improvement. And I expect great things next year. I think we'll, I think we'll, we'll shock a few people. Get behind the team come down to the matches. It's a great event, it's a great time. You will enjoy yourself, we will give you value for money, and we will win.